The ex-priest and the great revival among the Catholics. That is the message I have for you today, ladies and gentlemen. Now, in this uh, particular message, I will be giving you some footage from an earlier video that I did. I like to break things uh, into sometimes into uh, bite-sized pieces so you can meditate upon it on this uh, part here that I'm talking about. And it's talking about a former priest, an ex-priest, an ex-Catholic priest uh, by the name of Mr. Charles Shinneke. He was a priest up there in Canada. Uh, and this took place in the late 1800s, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This man was famous all over the world. Uh, I did an earlier video I quoted from the New York Times and uh, many clips from that paper. Uh, this man was well known. He was, a, he was a Catholic for 50 years, and he was a priest for 25 of those years. I mean, he was heavy duty into the whole scene. You know, but then, you know what happened? The man dug into the Word of God for himself, and he started comparing the Scriptures with the teachings of Roman Catholicism. And it was a process that took years, but finally, this man left the church. And what took place, ladies and gentlemen, he had a church, but but as he preached the word uh, to these Roman Catholic people, he started sharing with them uh, the differences between the Catholic teachings and the, uh, the scriptures, the Bible. And what took place, ladies and gentlemen, ultimately was uh, one of the greatest revivals. In fact, uh, people came from all over the country, I think all over the world, uh, to, to, to go there to see what was happening. And they said, it's uh, at the time, I mean, it's probably still uh, the greatest revival among Catholics to this day. Uh, they said they never saw anything like it. And I want you to listen carefully, folks. It was nothing but the Word of God that brought these people out. Same thing with me. It was the Scriptures. So, you know, it's what a stark difference between what you hear from this former Roman Catholic priest and the ecumenical spirit that has invaded the modern day church, especially, you know, uh, non-denominational uh, non churches and interdenominational churches. I can almost guarantee you that they've been sold out to Rome. They're, they're compromising with them. You're not going to hear anything remotely close to what this man did. And this, take it, uh, from him, folks. He's a former priest. This guy was offering up Catholic masses, uh, just like any other Roman Catholic priest. But the Spirit of the Living God opened his eyes and brought him out. Glory to God! So uh, one of the greatest revivals, and he also uh, came forth with warnings, folks. Uh, he had to, and uh, this man knew, and he, and he saw even in his own day, he saw the weakness of that. Day, all the churches that compromise. Uh, he even at one point he says, you know, the, the word Protestant has almost become nonsensical. <laughs> it has no meaning. Why? Because the people were being compromised even in his day. So here we are all these years later, folks. That is why this uh, message is so important for you to listen to. So listen carefully. And it said, surely the continent of America has never seen a more admirable transformation of a whole people than was then and there accomplished with no other help than the reading of the gospel that people had suddenly exchanged the chains of the most abject slavery for the royal scepter of liberty which Christ offers to those who believe in him. Wow! Folks, that is real, true revival. The exact opposite of what you see taking place in the land today with the inroads of the Church of Rome are nothing less than amazing. Mr. Shinneke in his book, he goes on to say, in less than six months, more than 100 venerable ministers of Christ and prominent Christian laymen of different denominations visited us. Incredible. He goes on to say, I'm happy to say that those eminent Christians, without any exception, after having spent from 1 to 20 days in studying for themselves this new religious movement, declared that it was the most remarkable and solid evangelical reformation among Roman Catholics they had ever seen. The Christians of the cities of Chicago, Baltimore, Washington, Philadelphia, New York, 
York, Boston, etc., having expressed a desire to hear from me of the doings of the Lord among us, I addressed them in their principal churches and was, was received with such marks of kindness and interest for which I shall never be able to able sufficiently to thank God. So this this man, I mean, he saw incredible things take place. I mean, the whole church was uh, converted. He goes on to say in that chapter that Rome is the same today. This is back in uh, when he wrote this book. This was uh, written, I believe, in 1886. Rome is the same today as she was when she burned John Huss, when she caused 70,000 Protestants to be slaughtered in France and 100,000 to be exterminated in Piedmont and Italy. Don't miss this next part here. On the 31st of December, 1869, I forced the Right Reverend Bishop Foley of Chicago to swear before the civil court at Kankakee that the following sentence was an exact translation of the doctrine of the Church of Rome as taught today in all the Roman Catholic seminaries, colleges, and universities through the Summa Theologica of Thomas Aquinas, volume 4, page 90, Though heretics must not be tolerated because they deserve it, we must bear with them till by a second admi admonition they may be brought back to the faith of the church. But those who after a second admonition remain obstinate to their errors must not only be excommunicated, but they must be delivered to the secular power to be exterminated. Let me stop right there. That's insanity, folks. They're talking about executing people. They're talking about murdering people. And this will give you more of a, uh, a, a real keen uh, perspective of what went on in the Reformation. This is the Church of Rome. This is how they are. They can, they can kill people if you disagree with them. They look at you as a heretic. Folks, this is, this is incredible stuff. And listen to what he goes on to say. It is on account of this law of the Church of Rome, which is today in full force as it was promulgated for the first time, that not less than 30 public attempts have been made to kill me since my conversion. Okay, so, so this man not only saw a tremendous revival, incredible, incredible revival, but they, they went after him numerous times. And, and you, you look at the book and you see what they did to this guy. It's amazing that, that he was able to live and, and, uh, and, and die a, a, basically a natural death. I mean, it's beyond belief. So, so the point I make here, ladies and gentlemen, in this video is that the Church of Rome and the doctrines that were preached at the time of this man, Shinneke, in the 1800s, those doctrines remain exactly the same. And what you see taking place in the land today with this counterfeit unity, I mean, it's everywhere. It is absolutely everywhere. People are being seduced. Rome is like a gigantic magnet drawing everybody back to her. And that's the purpose of this video. As I go in, you'll be able to see. And I'll be taking a look, as I said, I'll take a look at that um, that warning from Mr. Shinneke, which is at the beginning of the book. Here is the warning, excerpts from the warning, written by Mr. Charles Shinneke, okay, to all the faithful ministers of the gospel. Listen carefully. I also dedicate this book, Venerable Ministers of the Gospel. Rome is the great danger ahead for the Church of Christ. And you do not understand it enough. The atmosphere of light, honesty, truth, and holiness in which you are born, in which you have breathed since your infancy, makes it almost impossible for you to realize the dark mysteries of idolatry, immorality, degrading slavery, hatred of the Word of God, concealed behind the walls of that modern Babylon. Besides that, the majority of the books of controversy against Rome are of such a dry character that though many begin to read them, very few have the courage to go to the end. The consequence is an ignorance of Romanism, which becomes more and more deplorable 
and fatal every day. It is ignorance which paves the way to the triumph of Rome in the near future if there is not a complete change in your views on that subject. It is that ignorance which paralyzes the arm of the Church of Christ and makes the glorious word Protestant senseless, almost a dead and ridiculous word. For who does really protest against Rome today? Where are those who sound the trumpet of alarm? Modern Protestants have not only forgotten what Rome was, what she is, and what she will forever be, the most irreconcilable and powerful enemy of the gospel of Christ. But they consider her almost a branch of the church whose cornerstone is Christ. Faithful ministers of the gospel, I present you this book that you may know that the monster church of Rome who shed the blood of your forefathers is still at work today at your very door to enchain your people to the feet of of her idols. So there you have it, folks. I mean, <laughs> wasn't that pretty powerful what went on with this man and, and, it, and the people that got saved? And it was all the scriptures. It was the word of God. Jesus said, you will know the truth. The truth will make you free. Hallelujah. So once again, I'm, I'm a former Roman Catholic, folks, and I can testify to you today that it was the scriptures, it was the word of God anointed by the spirit of the living God that brought me out of that darkness. So when you see this ecumenism going on today, that's that's darkness invading the church. That's what That's all it is. It's the darkness coming in. And the pastor's are, are, are laying down and letting it come in. They're not taking a stand like this man did. You see, revival, true revival happens uh, when, when you take a stand against these things, folks. And I'm talking, you know, the modern day, the charismatic movement, the whatever you want to call it, the renewal. I was part of that, folks. But hear me today, it's still Roman Catholic. They still go to Mass. They still pray to Mary. In fact, when I was a Catholic in that charismatic movement, my prayers to Mary increased so don't fool for the lie, this modern day lie, working hand in hand with the charismatic Catholics, folks. It's darkness invading the church. So I'm going to leave it there. You be blessed and have a great day.